Hello, N4HNH here with the Yaesu FT-DX 5000MP. Um, although that's not what the video is about, what I wanted to, to show you is this. You know, I've shot some videos lately about, you know, using IPO, intercept point optimization, attenuation, um, and, uh, you know, deciding when to use an amplifier, pre-amplifier. So, for example, intercept point optimization versus AMP1, AMP2. And generally, you'll hear me say on the on the seven megahertz and below, I generally run IPO, and sometimes even on the twenty meter band, fourteen megahertz. But fourteen megahertz, it depends on whether I'm doing sideband or CW. I tend to use amp one for CW because I've narrowed my receiver down uh, so much in the front end. You know, in fact, I'll narrow it down to uh, well, I'll use the three hundred hertz filter you see here, and then digitally. I will even narrow it down to 50 hertz width, so with the DSP uh, width. And so, uh, you know, generally I'll need to add a little bit of sensitivity since I'm doing all that um, narrowing in the front end and, and then in the DSP. So I usually will need amp one. Well, I'm chasing a soda station right now in California. Hopefully he's still there. I saw his post on the Soda Watch website, and uh, when I tuned here, I couldn't hear him. Now, you'll notice my frequency. Sometimes, you know, not everybody's dead. He posted for 14.061, but I found him by engaging Amp 2 because I thought, well, maybe I need a little more sensitivity. And I do have digital noise reduction engaged as well, by the way, and it's set to 15. All right, so I, there he is. So I moved it down just a little bit because I was able to, and this is a little trick you might want to be mindful of. I was able to hear his pitch a little bit better when I moved down to 980. Just the, the tone increased in frequency a little bit. Now, of course, I can, I can do that uh, with my pitch control here as well. I normally run it at 600. See right there, 600. Um, my side tone. But anyway, what I'm saying is sometimes I'll move it up or down just a little bit in case a slight different pitch will help me pull them out of the weeds. And that's what I did here. I wound up at 9.8. It doesn't mean he was off frequency or anything. It just meant that I was hearing him a little better at a slightly different pitch. And so I think he's actually quit sending now, but you got to hear him a little bit there. It required amp too, though, for me to pull him out. And so this is one of those cases, you know, so think of it this way. Generally on 20 meters, I'm not going to use a preamp. I'll, I'll use IPO. Uh, this radio actually has two levels of IPO. IPO1, which is still a little bit of amplification, but it is optimized for signal-to-noise ratio. And it's a, it's a very, very little amplification. And then this radio has an option, I'll just toggle to it, called IPO2, which is a literal bypass of any amplification uh, whatsoever. It's just, it's just taking the signal off the antenna. It's doing the fir the first IF is doing its thing, uh, bringing it down to about a, about a nine megahertz IF, and then sending it right on over to the roofing filters. Um, so, but generally, if you have a radio that only has one level of IPO, there is a little bit of amplification there, but it's mostly favoring signal to noise ratio. But in his case, I needed amp to to be able to pull him up out of the weeds. And, um, and again, the little trick, sometimes they really are off frequency, okay? And this radio has a little indicator right here, and, and if they're off frequency, you just turn that and you just turn the dial until um, that the two little green bars are straddling the red bar, okay? That's to put it real simple. There he is. Um, but like I said, sometimes it's not even an issue that they're off frequency. It's just that down in the weeds like that, it can help if I change the pitch slightly like that see now your your ear may be different than mine maybe you preferred it better here at at dead on 061 see kind of comes up out of the noise floor when i go down just 20 hertz he's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 990 there on his, his actual frequency maybe around 990 
Uh, I don't think he's exactly on 14061, and if he is, well, you know, that's phenomenal because most radios are going to drift a little bit. This radio has an oven control crystal uh, oscillator, and so uh, oven compensated, you know, however you want to say. And um, so it goes through about a two-minute warm-up, and then it holds it the frequency stability to uh, 0.05 parts per million. I've never seen a radio hold it any tighter than that. But to, to be fair, the FTDX 101, a lot of the other radios, even from other manufacturers, uh, their stability is 0.1, and that's honestly quite good. Um, but I know that, and I shot a video about this, how to check the reference oscillator against WWV. I know this radio is within one hertz uh, stability always. So he's probably in the neighborhood of 990, um, maybe even 985. But, I, you know, just I got a little bit better pitch that I could pull out of that noise a little better by varying the VFO a little bit in 980 helped but I also needed amp 2 amp 1 was not quite enough um rf amplification to pull him up um you know and that's an issue of sensitivity there so i needed a combination of additional sensitivity and rotating the vfo knob to pull him out of the weeds you know me i'm always trying to challenge myself uh you know pulling out stations 2000 2300 2200 miles away what have you um, that are running QRP, so it takes a lot. And get get this again, let me reiterate, folks, I don't have a huge station here. I have no beam, I have no tower. I run wire antennas. In this case, what I'm listening to him on is my 160-meter doublet that's uh, only 45 feet in the air, um, and it is tuned with a, uh, a Palstar AT Auto tuner. Could use any tuner. I've tuned it with my manual MFJ tuner before, my 989C. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm just using wire. 45 feet in the air, 250 feet of wire fed with the uh, window line, technically. Uh, you know, you've seen it in other videos. Um, but, if, you know, 450 on window line. Not true ladder line. And by the way, the reason for that is, let me, oops, wrong direction. Let me show you. There's the tuner, by the way, right here. And then you'll see the window line coming in. It comes in the top of that window over there. I just pulled the window down, closed the window line in it. Comes across the top there and down to the back of the tuner. The reason I like the window line, it's um, nearly as good as actual open wire line, real ladder line. Um, but it also... Uh, can be used in conjunction with a ladder lock. And I've featured that in another video. I think if you looked at the video, uh, my antenna farm video, you'll see ladder locks or just look up ladder lock online. Um, the window line fits perfectly into the ladder lock using the ladder lock as a center insulator and your window line is going to stay secure. Takes the stress off the uh, wires of the antenna and, take, and really takes the stress off the window line. So I just wanted you to see uh, that scenario that just, you know, presented itself uh, there for me to show you, uh, you know, chasing this, you know, what my friend Joel calls a ghost station. In this case, though, having to use AMP2 and vary the VFO a little bit just to pull them up out of the weeds. Okay, so hopefully someone will find that helpful and informative. Uh, thank you, Patreons, for helping me keep this channel alive and... Uh, motivating me to continue making these videos. If anyone else would like to become a Patreon supporter of the channel, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash N4HNH. And if you would, please like and subscribe. That helps the channel out. Doesn't cost you anything. Um, and also, if you do subscribe, uh, click the bell and you'll be notified when I upload the next video. Again, hey, thanks for watching, and this is N4H&H saying 73.